Hello everyone, this is Jumbo Commander, and this is a gameplay video. I'm gonna goldfish a little bit with my most recent deck tech, Azuri Renegade Leader. This elf ball strategy goes crazy as elf synergies work together, producing tons of mana and damage, and it's something you really have to see to believe. One important difference is that this deck I'm using is my personal deck. It is not the Azuri that I deck teched, which was a budget build. So you can see some of the same synergies working in this deck, but not all of them are demonstrated. I'll put a tapped out link in the description for my non-budget Azuri deck, but let's jump right in and start seeing what Azuri can do. All right, let's see what my opening seven looks like. Already this looks good. Having a one drop mana elf is really powerful in this deck and Kyrian Ranger is just an all-star. Uh, now drawing Concordant Crossroads this early isn't very important, but I also like the Fauna Shaman, even though it's super slow, it will let me take advantage of trading in creatures later. I'll lead off with a land and a mana dork on turn one and there's nothing much else to do. So we'll move on to turn two draw a Reclamation Sage. Solid card, good interaction, not very good in gold fishing, because it doesn't really do anything. Uh, maybe we can chuck it to Fauna Shaman a little bit later. I think that I'm gonna want the Fauna Shaman on the battlefield so I can make that move, because we have some good cards like Curian Ranger, which allow for shenanigans, but not a lot of really big mana creatures or explosive creatures we need. So starting turn three, we draw a Fierce Empath. Again, a really great creature for the late game. We can grab one of our six drops. We can't really generate six mana yet. So we have a few late game cards. Let's Fauna Shaman one of them away. The Reclamation Sage will not be doing anything. So let's chuck it and see what else we can get. I'm thinking we're gonna need some sort of mana elf. A Priest of Titania would be really good, but I think I'm going to go with a Heritage Druid because the Heritage Druid will allow me to empty my hand right now, whereas a lot of the other Man Elves will make me wait a turn to do it. Uh, this could be a very greedy play, but it might be okay because the Fierce Empath is going to give me some card draw and any future creatures I'll be able to get uh, Fauna Shaman away. So I play out this elf, it's kind of a useless elf, but it does let me uh, really, really flood the board, and I do like having a big board. Now, I immediately search for Crater of Behemoth because that's the go-to, but I really can't cast it for any value. So I'm going to take a Woodland Bellower instead, because I can barely cast that and then get a really relevant uh, three drop onto the battlefield, and then maybe set up for a win the turn after. If I have a lot of elves and I have a Zuri on the battlefield, it could be really good. And Woodland Bellower can search up exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and start turn four. This is looking like a really solid attempt. I have a lot of resources on the battlefield. So I go to draw a Genesis Wave. Now at first, I'm pretty disappointed because if a Crater Hoof Behemoth costs too much mana, then Genesis Wave is a freaking useless draw. Uh, but I take a second look at it, and right now I'm kind of figuring out what I can do, because when you have access to every elf in your deck, you might be overlooking some really good synergies. So right now I'm doing the math to find out if I get a certain card, whether I can generate more mana. Uh, and the answer is yes. If I get a Priest of Titania, and drop the Concordant Crossroads, I can produce much more mana than I thought previously. So I decide to go for it, uh, try to get a bunch of mana right now, and then go for a Genesis Wave. So I found a Shaman away the Woodland Bellower, searching for a Priest of Titania. I'm going to play the Priest of Titania and then play the Concordant Crossroads, giving it haste. And then that should let me generate quite a bit of mana and hopefully get pretty lucky off of a Genesis Wave. I usually like the Genesis Wave for almost my whole deck, but let's see what we can get up to here. So counting all of my elves, I have seven elves on the battlefield, which is a pretty respectable number. So let's add seven mana to my mana pool. 
Then I'm going to Curian Ranger. That's going to return a force to my hand to untap an elf. And I'm going to untap that mana elf. And I'm going to add another seven to my mana pool. That'll give me 14 total mana. I have not made a land drop this turn. So I'll play the forest and add one more mana up to 15. And then I'm going to be able to tap three elves because of Heritage Druid, which will bring me up to 18 mana. That means that with the green, green, green required to start off Genesis Wave, I'll be able to Genesis Wave for 15. Let's see if this Genesis Wave is any good to me. Let's see 15. Draga Tree Speaker, Mana Dork, whatever. There's a Muta Vault, that's fine. A Wirewood Channeler will give me a ton of mana. Oh, and an Elvish Arch Druid. Both of those will give me tons of mana. Chameleon Colossus is a huge beater. That Sylvan Messenger will give me some card draw on Elves. The Oracle of Moldiah. Both of the Adaptive Automaton and the Empiris Perfect. A couple more lands, Metallic Mimic. And then also a Timber Watch Elf. Oh my gosh, this is a pretty fantastic hit. So some relevant cards here. First up, the Wirewood Channeler and the Elvish Arch Druid are two of the best cards that I could have hit. They're gonna produce a ton of mana for me and mana lets me do more things. Other things that are in here right now, that Oracle of Moldiah will let me see the top card, maybe be able to get some value out of it. Uh, I'm going to be able to draw that with the Sylvan Messenger, which is going to be pretty solid. So I'm going to put that trigger on the stack and see what other elves I might have access to. So I'm going to take that Far Haven elf and then whiff on a forest, but then have a Findhorn elves and a Jiraga Warcaller. So this is going to be really powerful. Already with this Genesis wave, I've generated plus three, plus three to my elves with the Adaptive Automaton the uh, Elvish Arch Druid and the Imperious Perfect. I have a bunch of mana from the Wirewood Channeler and the Elvish Arch Druid. I have the ability to basically get my commander through for lethal damage with the Timber Watch Elf that I flipped as well. I mean, my attacks are gonna be insane and the mana that I'm tapping for is just gonna be ridiculous as well. Uh, I know I have metallic mimic triggers. I'm not gonna worry about them right now. Uh, I think that I'm a little bit over the top and I have plenty of creatures that that'll give me ability to attack. So right now I'm contemplating how much mana I can actually produce, and I know I can produce a lot more. I have 17 elves on the battlefield, and I could cast my commander, I could make an elf with Imperius Perfect, heck I could turn the Muta Vault into an elf. But I really don't need all of that, so I'm just gonna add 34 mana to my mana pool without really worrying about it. <laughs> no, just a casual 34 mana to my mana pool. Uh, and then see what I can do with it. I know I want to play Azuri and start buffing things. I know I want to play this Draga Warcaller and give everything a permanent buff. And then I want to swing out and do insane amounts of damage. Now, we're at a point in time where I can do a lot, a lot of different things. One thing that I know I want to do is get some permanent uh, action on the battlefield. Uh, Azuri pumping everyone and giving everyone trample is going to be really solid, but also keeping the Timberwatch elf back and not attacking with it and threatening to be able to do commander lethal in one go to one person is going to be really, really strong as well. Uh, it is only turn four, so I don't know how much defenses my opponents will have. A lot of these will have trample. Um, right now I'm playing the Findhorn Elves, activating the Muta Vault, uh, doing some boring stuff. Actually, um, the Farhaven Elf shuffling to try and get another land would be fine as well, uh, but I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, the ability to just produce tons of Elves onto the board. Yeah, this Jiraga Warcaller, I played it for five, and then with the Metallic Mimic it gets six, so all of my Elves get plus six plus six. Uh, that means that I have about 20 mana floating that I can just float all of it into Azuri, which means I can pump all of my creatures just a crazy amount. And remember, because of Concordant Crossroads, this can all come together. Everything can attack. And that's not to mention, we could send these in a whole bunch of different ways. I put the four onto Azuri to let you know that I've pumped everything four times. That's a total of 12... <laughs> It's insane. That's it's pumped plus 12 plus 12 and trample 
plus the plus six plus six from Draga Tree Speaker, plus the plus three plus three from all of the anthems on here. I mean, this is just crazy. Not to mention the Timber Watch Elf for a little bit of added value. So what caused this deck to just go off like crazy on turn four? Honestly, Genesis Wave and a really solid hit on Genesis Wave was really powerful. But what really caused it is Priest of Titania. Priest of Titania allowed me to ramp up a crazy amount of mana. I went pretty risky by putting a lot of elves onto the battlefield, but that ended up paying off. The Priest of Titania, the Elvish Archdruid, and the Wirewood uh, Channeler, those are the ones that produce crazy amounts of mana and let me go over the top in ways that I really didn't expect. And the Genesis Wave let me put them the mana to good use. And the Concordant Crossroads let me win this turn instead of next turn. All of them are really valuable. And then cards like Survival of the Fittest and Fauna Shaman let me search up these crazy combo pieces. And this is honestly what the deck is all about. Going huge with the crazy combo pieces involved. Thank you everyone for watching this Azuri Renegade Leader Goldfishing session. If you liked this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing or you can click on the link and watch the deck tech for a budget version of this Azuri build. If you want to hear more from me, go ahead and tweet at Jumbo Commander or write an email, jumbocommander at gmail.com. I put out videos every Wednesday, so tune in this coming Wednesday for a brand new deck tech. Thanks everyone, bye bye.